Hello and welcome to another episode of A Weekly Waypoint. Today, something a little bit different, we are playing Vampire Survivors, I'm sure you recognise it. Just like last week, I was going to record some Halo, but unlike last week, the problem was I was too goddamn sleepy by the time I was recording this. Last night I was so goddamn tired, I thought, what is a game I can just play when I'm really tired? I know, Vampire Survivors. All I have to do is make easy decisions and dodge bats. If you're wondering, Vampire Survivors is a game I've put a little bit of time into, but I've not 100% completed, and... Also, I haven't played it in a long time, so I'm a little bit rusty. There's my excuse. Not that I need an excuse. Spoiler alert. Anyway, we have lots of things to talk about this week, and I am going to open with, once again, World of Warcraft. Not because I've been playing more Cataclysm Classic, but because I've been playing Mists of Pandaria Remix, or whatever they're calling it. It was better when they just called it Pandemonium, but apparently there was some like copyright issues with that, so... It's now called WoW Remix Pandemonium. No, it's called WoW Remix Mists of Pandaria. I keep getting this wrong. <laughs> For those of you who do not know, WoW Remix Pandemonium is a event, a limited time event, which WoW has suddenly realised are all the rage, uh, where you make a brand new character and you go back and you play through Mists of Pandaria again, but it's got some unique twists. Um, like, you pick up these gems, all of your gear has sockets, or most of your gear has sockets, and you pick up these gems which can grant you abilities from different classes and stuff. Um, funnily enough, I would say making the decision on how to build, like, the stuff is a little bit like Vampire Survivors. Maybe that's why my brain went here. It's not really, it's not like the, f it's not a Survivors like it by any means. Um, but it just reminded me a little bit of that. There were rumours, actually, that when they when people saw the items in the data, people thought that they might be making a Survivor's like out of WoW somehow. Maybe they still will, who knows. Anyway, um, the thing I really like about WoW Remix Mists of Pandaria, which is certainly not a mouthful to say, is uh, that the main thing you're doing it for is getting bronze caches, which, or caches, I guess, um, <laughs> oh, caches, I'm so posh. Which enables you to buy uh, unique and rare drop mounts and gear uh, appearances from the Mists of Pandaria era. And this really appeals to me because the Mists of Pandaria is when I first started playing WoW. And yet the way that game was uh, structured back then, there still wasn't all that much emphasis on story despite the fact that you leveled through some very story heavy content. Meaning that even during Mists of Pandaria, the expansion that this stuff was relevant in, um, when I was leveling I was kind of ferried off to other zones before ever finishing the storylines of the ones that I was leveling through, and in some cases I didn't even touch certain zones, like I don't think I saw anything in Krasarang Wilds, but the way they've structured WoW Remix is you get rewards for completing zone storylines and stuff, so I am having a fantastic time just playing through those and knowing that even if I hit level 70 and I've still got zone storylines untouched, there's still reasons for me to go and play through those, unlike there would be if I was just doing a time walking campaign leveling an alt. This is basically what I wanted time walking campaigns to be all along, um, but there's no real way of structuring those to meet, unless like you make leveling way, way slower, which people would hate, there's no real way of structuring it so that you level at the right pace to see all of the story before you hit level 60 and move on to the latest expansion or whatever. Of course the community have found things to rah rah about, there was a time when uh, you could just farm frogs on Timeless Isle, because that was an exploit from back in the day that's come back with our remix. You could farm it for bronze and they stopped that because it was... You know, you never want to make people feel like the most efficient way to play the game, the way that they feel forced to play the game, is to just kill frogs over and over again. That's not the intended experience, but taking that away has made a certain portion of the player base very angry, and they're pushing the whole blizzard hate fun drum which i just think is a little wild seeing as the reason they likely disabled this was because killing frogs for power is not fun when you have to do it 12 hours a day to i guess compete but people are angry about it all the same so maybe people did enjoy that who am i to say there are some issues with scaling at max level i know um it's not perfect i assume they'll patch that stuff this week um and if not it's not the end of the world for me personally because that's not really what i'm here for 
Uh, I'm mostly here for experiencing the story and grabbing as many of the unique rewards as I can. It's wild also that you can buy like rare drops and it is really tempting to like buy the Huelon mount and stuff like that, stuff I've never been able to get, but uh, I would rather get the stuff that's never gonna be obtainable again as opposed to the stuff that I can theoretically obtain at any time. So yeah, WoW Remix, Mists of Pandaria. Jolly good fun. I really hope they continue doing it for other expansions. Everyone's saying BFA. I want them to do it for an unpopular... Oh, well, BFA was an unpopular expansion, but I want them to do it for Warlords of Draenor. Um, I guess selfishly because I'm one of the few people who enjoyed Warlords of Draenor because it was my first new expansion, so I spent most of it just continuing to discover WoW and leveling alts and stuff. But still, um, I think that they've proved that with this formula, they can make anything... Fun. They can make anything fun with tweaks, and I think it would be a great way of re-experiencing the best part of Warlords of Draenor, which was the leveling experience. People forget that. Leveling through Warlords of Draenor was a really good experience. Anyway, also in the MMO sphere this week, I've been sinking a decent amount of time into Star Wars The Old Republic. I talked a little bit about this last week, uh, but it continues. I believe I talked about how I made a new trooper, and I was just gonna kind of like level a fresh character well I abandoned that idea because I got curious um, and so I jumped back on my very first character Keris Sen my Jedi Sentinel and I decided to see what some of the expansion content was like and so I completed the kind of interlude between expansions and I also completed the first expansion Rise of the Hut Cartels so if you're wondering what Swittor's first expansion is like I will say it's very good, I really like the location, uh, like the art style behind it, like how it looks, it's really nice. I really enjoyed the story as well. One thing I will say though is it is one zone for an entire expansion, and I wonder how that expansion was priced, because compared to other MMOs, I think this expansion was slightly one note and slightly lacking in maybe like gameplay variety i mean whenever you're going back and experiencing an old mmo expansion you're never going to get the true experiences when it was brand new because you know certain things have changed since then and also it's not going to be end game when you finish the story anymore so i don't know how much content there actually was for people at end game in rise of a hut cartel or whatever but as just like a little story expansion to slot onto the end to continue with it's really fun and i noticed we're starting to flesh out some characters who are probably going to be part of a story for years to come so I'm enjoying that you know because the bulk of the vanilla story is just your class origin so it can feel a little bit segmented in that way which is why I was curious to get to the expansion storylines because now I'm not playing a Jedi Sentinel origin story now I'm playing a Republic side of an expansion story if you know what I mean so I'm getting more into like the grander narrative in that sort of way, even though if I remember right, the Jedi Sentinel story did kind of deal with grand narrative stuff anyway. I've also been continuing to level Mayra more, my Sith Inquisitor, um, and I'm near, I'm, I'm in Act 3 now, I'm near the end of the Sith Inquisitor story. It's really fun to just be an evil piece of shit. <laughs> my only issue is, I'm not sure I want to experience the Empire side expansion stories through her, because she's kind of immature, she kind of makes the evilest decision just to cackle, and that's not really the lens through which I would like to see the Empire's side of the expansion stories. So I think what I'm going to do is <laughs> gate myself again, because I hate progressing in video games. And I'm going to make, when I finish the Sith Inquisitor storyline, I'm going to make a light side Sith Juggernaut, uh, which is more of a counterpart to the Jedi Sentinel in terms of... Uh, you know, it's, it's a very symmetrical game in terms of, like, classes and origins, and I would say that Sith Warrior, which is the Sith Juggernaut, uh, is the equivalent of the Jedi Knight, which is, you know, the Jedi Sentinel, so um, I like the idea of being a light side Sith Warrior and just being like, you know, obviously I'm down to do some evil shit, but only if it's all for the greater good of the Empire, and see if, like, that's what the light side story shakes out as being. I've also created a new page on my Swittor spreadsheet, which is kind of like all of the story content in the game and then a little tick box for if I've done like the light side version of it and if I've done the dark side version of it. A little bit like treating them all like their own separate Bioware campaigns in that respect. I don't see those stories as having a ton of differentiation based on which side you decide to kind of go through it, you know, aligned as. Um, but it would be a good way of replaying a story that, you know, after a few years have gone by, I can't quite remember. I'm like, okay, well let's replay it, but instead of just doing it again, 
do it as like a dark side Jedi Knight, that would be pretty cool. Also in video games this week, the Assassin's Creed Shadows trailer got revealed and it is a cinematic trailer with no gameplay asking for a pre-order of £120, which is the one and only controversy which should be surrounding that particular topic. But beyond that, um, I've been really excited for a Japanese-focused Assassin's Creed game since the series was conceptualised, but also very much since um, Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey and like this RPG era of Assassin's Creed, which I believe they've mentioned is the kind of Assassin's Creed game that Assassin's Creed Shadows is going to be. And last night I dipped my head back into Origins, which I have finished, but I have not 100% perfected because the requirements for doing so in that game are pretty hefty. You need to literally complete all locations, and if you know Assassin's Creed Origins, that is a lot of fucking locations. So I, um, I've just been like, I've had it on my Xbox drive, on my uh, external drive, because it's one of the older Assassin's Creeds that can do that. I've had it there for a while, uh, just to like pop in every now and again and do a location, but obviously, uh, the way my brain works, it's all or nothing a lot of the times for these games, so I haven't actually been doing that. So, I also uh, perfected Assassin's Creed Odyssey years back on PS4, aside from the DLC. Um, but I picked up Assassin's Creed Odyssey Gold Edition on a deep discount to get Assassin's Creed Free on Xbox and haven't touched it there. So I've re-downloaded Assassin's Creed Odyssey on Xbox um, and I was I was playing Origins a little bit while I was re-downloading it. Sorry, this is a very convoluted explanation. All this is to basically just say Origins is still a fucking phenomenal game and if you've never played it, especially now with like the FPS boost on Xbox, it plays brilliantly and it looks gorgeous still. And I highly recommend these RPG Assassin's Creeds if you haven't played them. And if you don't know what I mean by that, I mean they're more open world RPGs in the traditional sense and less like the stealth action games of the past. Both are brilliant. I love the Ezio trilogy, but I love the or I love Origins and Odyssey so goddamn much. I do own Valhalla. I played about 20 hours of it when I first got my Xbox. Valhalla is an exceptionally bloated game from what I've heard. And it didn't necessarily grab me the same way Origins and Odyssey did, despite the fact that I do still enjoy the time period. Um, Origins, Odyssey, uh, Valhalla, and Shadows are like the four key historical time period slash themes that really grab me. So I don't know how they're ever going to grab me in any future Assassin's Creed RPG style games because I feel like I'm going to have all I've wanted. But yeah, I should maybe go back and finish Valhalla, all of the DLC. Um, is available to me for £15 until July 1st and I may take advantage of that deal and but I also just kind of want to play Odyssey right now so yeah all this to say as you can probably tell my hyperfixation with Assassin's Creed is creeping back into my life and you'll probably be hearing more about it next week. I'm really curious how Shadows is going to handle the dual protagonist thing like they've got the more stealthy ninja looking character and then the more head-on fighting uh, samurai looking character in Yasuke. Um, so my guess is that, yeah, they're going to have some kind of gameplay thing where it caters to two different playstyles there. Anyway, one last thing I want to talk about this week, uh, before the episode is over, is that I have just had quite a creative week. I have decided, uh, and you may roll your eyes having listened to other weekly waypoints where I've started projects which have never seen fruition, but hey, I'm a guy who starts things and occasionally finishes things, but at least I try lots of new things, Damn it, that's how I'm choosing to look at this. I started deciding to see if I could learn how to draw, and it's partially like a talent versus practice project, because I don't have any talent in drawing at all. I've always wanted to be able to draw, but having spent the last week trying to learn how to draw, I can confirm zero talent in this fucking meat orb inside my head for drawing and I'm hoping that if I continue to just practice enough I can get it to the point where it feels as natural to me as writing stories does but right now everything is difficult if I'm drawing a face drawing the face is difficult figuring out the eyes is difficult none of it comes naturally to me yet and I feel like I've got such a long goddamn way to go before any of it does but there have been times already where I've been like is is this even worth my time is it even possible for me to get to a point where it feels natural and I'm able to kind of like draw the scenes that I see in my head of certain situations. I'm not going to share anything I've made yet because it's all rubbish. I've shown some of my friends. I, I do feel like I am now in a place where I'm able to try and pursue things like this without necessarily just immediately going, 
this sucks, I'm not getting any better, I quit immediately, this is embarrassing. I don't have to be embarrassed by failing at a thing that I've never tried before, you know? I'm beyond the era of cringe, I feel like, and this might also be where some of my recent uh, distaste of internet discourse has come in, of like, I feel like maybe I'm just maturing a little bit in some ways, and younger people are entering the discourse, and maybe they haven't you know, had some of these experiences I've had in terms of like, oh, realizing these are two different conversations, but you know, realizing certain things don't have to be an issue. That was just completely nonsensical. Hopefully someone got something from that. But yeah, to treat myself after uh, several days of having major difficulty trying to draw basic things, I, I treated myself to a little short story. I said, Christian, why don't you do something creative that you can actually do without it being difficult every goddamn step of the way? So I've written a new short story, it's on my blog, critigrywrites.wordpress.com. Uh, it is called Message for the Stars, or Message to the Stars, I don't quite remember. <laughs> and it is about a man at the end of his world, uh, his world is ending, the moon is crashing into the planet, and uh, he is writing down his experiences in case any future travellers happen across the ruins of his civilization so that he can kind of give them a sense of who he was and who they were. So I'll be providing a link to that short story down in the description below and I hope you enjoy it. I have also completed the first draft of another short story uh, which will be seeing the light of day fairly soon. I might like leave it a month because the whole original idea behind Critigree Writes was uh, I write a short story every month, which I have not really done between September and March, um, but or April, I guess we're in May now, aren't we? But again, I'm a man of fixations which come and go, and unfortunately, uh, the fixation on being a writer <laughs> is one of those things. I know it's all about discipline, and that's what I've tried to instill in myself with that blog, but um, I don't know. If I do have ADHD, maybe that it answers some questions that I have on that front. Anyways, you can see... Uh, the, the darkness is closing it around me, the enemies are, are at my gates and I did not make it. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Weekly Waypoint. Let me know what you thought down below and I will see you in whatever I make next.